precious moments. This was posted on The Blessed Hope by Amy B. on the 2nd of August in 2019. Enjoy the novel as it reads. It will stand through all the ages. Savor each chapter as you go, taking time to turn the pages, Wanda Mitchell said. I always called her mom. On my wedding day, she hugged me and said with tear-filled eyes, You are the daughter of my heart. I've always wanted a daughter. I could not have picked a better wife for my son. She continued, I am so happy today for my son and to welcome you into our family. I did not see the wedding photographer capturing that precious moment, but the picture of me in my mother-in-law's arms with tears flowing down both of our faces is one of my favorite wedding pictures. Yes, I married the man of my dreams exceedingly abundantly above all I had hoped or asked for. But on that day, I also became a part of another family. I am grateful to God that my new mother-in-law and I loved many similar things. We both loved art, journaling, poetry, cooking, and ministry. Sometimes I wondered if my husband was attracted and loved me because I reminded him of his mom. As the years passed, my mother in love always made me feel that her son got heaven's best the day he married me. In 2003, I sent her the following thoughts for Mother's Day. Somebody said it takes about six weeks to get back to normal after you've had a baby. Somebody doesn't know that once you're a mother, normal is history. Somebody said you learn how to be a mother by instinct. Somebody never took a toddler shopping. Somebody said being a mother is boring. Somebody never rode in a car with a teenager with a driver's permit. Somebody said if you're a good mother, your child will turn out good. Somebody thinks that A child comes with directions and a guarantee. Somebody said, Good mothers never raise their voices. Somebody never came out of the back door just in time to see her child hit a golf ball through her neighbor's kitchen window. Somebody said, You don't need an education to be a mother. Somebody never helped a fourth grader with his math. Somebody said, you cannot love the fifth child as much as you love the first. Somebody does not have five children. Somebody said a mother can find all the answers to her child-rearing questions in books. Somebody never had a child stuff beans up his nose or in his ears. Somebody said the hardest part about being a mother is labor and delivery. Somebody never watched her baby get off on the bus for the first day of kindergarten or on a plane headed for military boot camp. Somebody said a mother can do her job with her eyes closed and one hand tied behind her back. Somebody never organized seven giggling brownies to sell cookies. Somebody said a mother can stop worrying after her child is married. Somebody does not know that marriage adds a new son or daughter in love to a mother's heartstrings. Somebody said a mother's job is done when her last child leaves home. Somebody never had grandchildren. Somebody said your mother knows that you love her and so you don't need to tell her. Somebody isn't a mother. My dear mother in love was only 59 years old about one month before we found out that this serious illness was ravaging her brain we had retraced a trip that she had taken with her son when he was just a nine-year-old boy she was a single mother raising her son and working and he was her only child she had taken him camping in the redwoods 
of California. When we returned to their camping spot in the summer of 2015, it was a special time for our family. We did not know that in less than two years from that family trip, she would be gone. The time spent camping, walking the beach, driving through the beautiful redwoods was momentous for my dear mother-in-law and her son. It had been 30 years since their last visit. It was joyous as well for me and our four children. Grandma was tired, and we thought it was just because she did not sleep well in the tent. She loved every minute watching her grandchildren roasting marshmallows and hot dogs over an open campfire, and she chuckled as they rode bikes through the woods. Another lesson learned from brain cancer was, take time and enjoy those that you love. You never know how long they will be with you. Do not take precious moments for granted. Colossians 4 and 5 says, Walk in wisdom towards those that are without redeeming the time. Psalms 31, 14 and 15 says, But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. And James t- tells us in James four, thirteen through 15, Go to now ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor, that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live, and do this or that. I also found a plaque that spoke to me um, regarding my mother-in-law and gave it to her when um, she lived with us. And it says, Our mother, you are the mother I received the day that I wed your son. And I just want to thank you, Mom, for the things that you have done. You have given me a gracious man with whom I share my life. You are his lovely mother and I his lucky wife. You used to pat his little head, and now I hold his hand. You raised in love a little boy, then gave to me a man. Father, I just thank you for those precious moments that you have blessed me with in my life. And God, as we remember the lessons of brain cancer, I pray, God, that you will help us not to take precious moments for granted, but to live each day as you would have us to. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.